Hi YouTube, so today I'm going to be presenting a video that's a little bit different than the usual car repair videos and um, what I'm going to show you today is actually how to build your own RV or pop, uh, portable pop-up trailer uh, water purification and filtration system where you um, have the ability to put the control of water quality back into your own hands and not necessarily rely on local municipalities or campgrounds to determine whether or not your water is safe. These are the key components that we're going to need to build the water filtration assembly. This is our stage one filter uh, which basically is a standard FC200 uh, water filter housing assembly and it includes a CF2 carbon uh, taste and odor cartridge um, that will filter sediments down to 5 microns which is actually ideal because in most campgrounds uh, the water that at least that I've seen is can be quite turbid especially during the uh, spring season when spring runoff occurs. Um, and so the whole idea behind this is to uh, sort of pre-filter the water, make sure that we remove all the coarse and fine well, actually the fine coarse and medium sediments uh, before it hits the secondary stage filter um, that will uh, employ the use of a ceramic core filter that can filter down to one micron. Uh, most bacteria uh, it falls in the two to two and a half micron range so this is why this water filter clearly states that it's a solution for bacteria and cyst filtration uh, and it's actually able to trap and kill bacteria 99.99999% of the time for fecal coliforms, E. coli, salmonella, uh, cryptosporidium, guardia cysts, and all sorts of waterborne diseases that can make you really sick if you consume it. And so the idea here is that uh, pre-filter filters out all the core sediments, you know, improves the taste and odor of your water, and then it flows into the secondary filter that will trap all the bacteria, as well as pass through more carbon that's impregnated in the ceramic core uh, filter medium. Um, now, as far as fittings are concerned, uh, I chose to use all brass connectors because brass is food safe, um, and it won't leach out like, say, aluminum connectors will, or leach out chemicals like plastic ones would. And so uh, you can pick these up generally from Home Depot or Lowe's and they're about five, six bucks each. And you want to buy one that's got a garden hose three quarter threaded into a three quarter NPT um, to go into stage one. Then you want a three quarter to three quarter NPT to join the two housings together. And then you want to have a three quarter NPT to garden hose mail out um, that will feed the water uh, to the actual tent trailer or RV. And of course, uh, we've got the matching Rainfresh 1504P brackets um, that we would hook onto the backside of each of the filters to support it underneath our trailer. Now, the reason why I'm suggesting to install these filters in a trailer, uh, underneath the trailer, is because uh, since these are a home water solution, they're not meant to be exposed to ultraviolet rays from the sun uh, because that will ultimately break the plastic down and lead to housing failure. Um, and so if you guys, you know, of your choice, you can choose to hang it underneath the tent trailer like I do, uh, or you can enclose it inside, like say a plastic toolbox where you've cored two holes to drop the filters in. And you'll get a better idea of what this looks like upon uh, assembly. Undo the housing. And this is the FC200. So for those that are wondering, you can either use an FC100 or an FC200 or even an FC005. Um, no real differences. It's just what filters included from the factory. Um, the nice thing with this model is that you can select a whole different variety of cartridges from coarse sediment to fine to medium to chemical and lead and taste and odor. Like there's the possibilities are endless with Rain Fresh products. And again, these are third party laboratory tested to ensure that they meet the most stringent uh, safety standards. So we go ahead, set these housings aside, and this is the uh, filter body. So we're going to go ahead and install the water inlet, which is a garden hose connector. Now, it depends on your hardware store availability. Some of these fittings, like this one here, don't have a swivel head to enable the easy screwing on of a garden hose. So the solution I'm going to have here is I'm going to put a brass quick connect nipple so that I can quick connect uh, the RV water hose from the campground water feed um, after it passes through a regulator. We're going to go ahead and install Teflon tape on our fitting. So the proper way to do Teflon tape is to make sure that you install the tape in the direction that you're threading in. And so the easiest way uh, to not make the mistake of putting the tape on backwards is to have the threaded side to your right and basically have the tape go from underneath and then you're just going to turn the thread towards you and making sure that you keep the tape taut 
um, so that it wraps the threads properly. And so because we're screwing a metal fitting into a plastic filter body, um, I found that wrapping this thread around evenly, you know, with at least three to even possibly four layers of Teflon tape um, does help in mitigating any potential leaks. I'm just going to pull that off. And then as you can see here, as I screw this in, that the end of the tape is going to be following the direction of which way I'm screwing in. And so when you look at your filter head, um, you need to make sure you pay attention to which side's in and what side's out. So since this is the water inlet, we're going to go ahead and very carefully screw this into the filter head. Um, because it is a plastic filter body, um, the chance of you stripping these threads is extremely easy. And it's unfortunate that Rainfresh didn't bother um, creating like metal threaded inserts. So we're going to take our wrench and just go ahead and tighten this fitting until it begins to feel snug. And again, I can't emphasize the importance of the fact that these filter housings are made from plastic and it doesn't take much to damage them. So you'd rather under tighten and have a couple of leaks where you can just kind of snug up the fittings if necessary. So this is what it looks like on the input side. We're going to now go ahead and take our three quarter to three quarter male fitting and again wrapping the tape where the threads on your right towards your right hand and then taking the tape and then wrapping underneath very tightly at least three to four wraps on the threads to give it a decent seal And since this is a male-male connector, we may as well repeat it for the other side since this is all taken apart. So again, very carefully, thread your fitting into the housing, looking at it from multiple angles to make sure that it's set squarely in the threads, and then begin screwing the fitting in slowly until you feel the threads catch properly and it's not cross-threading. Now it helps sometimes to have the filter head on the end of a table so that you can use your wrench and get some decent leverage to screw that on snugly. So now that stage one's housing is assembled, we can now go ahead and unbox stage 2's filter. Now on stage 2, the model FC000, you got to pay careful attention to um, the unboxing because there's actually some pieces inside this box of importance. So uh, inside the FC000, the one that filters bacteria, there's actually a cleaning screen which is really comprised of a drywall sanding screen as well as a ceramic cartridge diameter measurement tool um, used to measure the outside diameter of this filter. And the reason why is that the ceramic filters are actually serviceable uh, and actually have a, uh, when they begin to plug up, you can actually use the sanding screen to sort of clean off the outside of the cartridge. But in doing so, you're actually wearing a little bit of the surface, the filtration surface away. And the purpose of this gauge is to tell you when that surface is too thin and the filter should be replaced, otherwise it won't protect you properly from um, contaminated water. So keep that as well as the instructions on how to clean the filter um, stored away. And much like what we did for the first filter, we're going to go ahead and carefully unscrew the housing and then very gently unscrew um, the ceramic cartridge from the inside. Paying careful attention not to lose the little o-ring that resides on the end of the filter assembly. Now sometimes, if this is really tight, the inside um, filter mount will come off from the filter head. And this is what actually the filter looks like from the factory. It's just a threaded end with a rubber o-ring. And then the part that came out of my filter head here um, can just simply be you know, sort of repressed back on. Um, paying careful attention here that 
there is an o-ring on the inside of this fitting and it's not screwed in it's a press fit so the notable differences between the fc200 and the fc000 is that on the fc200 you can see here that the little spigot that the filter goes onto is just a, a friction slide on mechanism whereas on the ceramic one even though this bushing here is a slide on there's an o-ring seal behind it and then this threaded portion is where that ceramic core goes into with that o-ring to seal um, the inside so that bacteria and contaminated water doesn't seep past the, the, the filtering medium. So um, if you get the heads mixed up, that's how you can tell the difference. So you can go ahead and install the water out spigot onto the filter housing or the filter head. Again, applying Teflon tape in the direction of how we're going to screw this fitting in. And then looking at the filter, the body, we're going to look for the out, make sure the threads are good, and then very carefully screw this in. And then using our wrench, go ahead and tighten until it's snug. Now the final step here, and this is where most of the damage can occur during the assembly process, is we now have to take the two filter heads and take the out from the first stage and screw it into the end of the second stage. And so we got to make sure that the easiest way to do it is to actually put the finished end down on the bottom and then placing your secondary stage one on top and just letting its own weight press down onto the threads where you can carefully hand screw with them, hand screw the, the top portion together. And then using a wrench, you want to hold the center fitting and then just twist the stage 2 head onto the threads until it's snug. And then just sort of even them out. And this is what the finished result would look like. You can see here. Um, there's not much of a gap, but just enough for our mounting brackets to hook onto. So now that this is all put together, we can now go ahead and unbox our carbon cartridge. And then put it onto the first stage head. And replace the body. And then we're going to leave that ceramic cartridge off and just put the housing on. And the reason why we want to do this is that we're going to now go ahead and run water through the system to ensure that there's no leaks um, and to make sure that we have a sufficient amount of water flowing through the filter and to flush out the black carbon particles through the filter assemblies um, so that we're not, you know, sort of carboning up this ceramic element. Now for my setup here, I mentioned earlier that we can use a quick connect fitting and since I don't have a brass one handy here in my backyard I'm just going to use this plastic one temporarily. With the housings vertical go ahead and connect your water supply. You'll see water will begin to fill this cartridge and black water will start filling the secondary stage filters. What we want to do here is flush it for about 30 seconds. As you can see here, without the ceramic cartridge, the flow rate is actually pretty good. We're feeding about 45 to 50 psi through this hose right now, um, uh, as what it would be simulated using a campground water sort of uh, water pressure regulator. Um, these filters are rated to flow at a minimum of one gallon per minute, or about 3.78 liters per minute, uh, which is usually sufficient water for washing. Um, and maybe not quite for showering, uh, 
in the case if you need a shower you can always use your built-in water pump uh, by filling your RV or your tent trailer storage tanks with the filtered water uh, and then use the uh, built-in pump on your unit uh, to give you more water pressure. So as the water's flowing here I don't see any leaks forming on any of my connections. So we can go ahead and disconnect the water and while we're at it we can go ahead and plug up the end by screwing on a water stop connector here and then repressurizing the system to see if there's any leaks. Again um, this assembly is not leaking anything. I might have a tiny bit of seepage but overall I'm, I'm really good. Go ahead and undo the stage 2 housing, dump the water, take your ceramic filter cartridge, carefully inspect it for any cracks or nicks or fractures as well as any damage to the end caps and making sure that you give it a gentle twist to ensure that the end cap seals um, haven't come apart. If they do, your filter is not filtering water properly. Take your threaded end, make sure that O-ring is on the end and carefully thread it into the little uh, filter nipple. Screw down until snug. Reinstall the filter housing. Paying attention to these little tabs here um, inside the housing because that's what holds the uh, ceramic filter uh, in the middle of the housings. Then give it a quick twist. Go ahead and reconnect your water line. As you can see here, there was a little bit of black um, discharge coming from the new filter. That's because the ceramic core um, filter element here contains activated charcoal to also do a job, do the job of resorting uh, foul taste odors and uh, even off colors in your water. So as you can see here, the flow rate after installing this ultra fine ceramic cartridge, um, the flow has diminished dramatically, but we're probably getting about a gallon per minute flow rate, which again, should be more than sufficient for most washing and cooking needs. Um, I emphasize that if you need to use a shower in your, in your travel trailer or your tent trailer, you can always use this clean filtered water and fill your holding tank and rely on your internal pump to do the pressurization job. So in our tent trailer here, this is what my finished uh, filtration system looks like. As you can see, I actually just mounted the brackets to the frame rails and essentially the campground water, regulated campground water, would be fed into this connector, would go through the first stage carbon sediment filter that will remove particles down to five microns and then pass through to the ultra fine one micron uh, ceramic core filter that will block out the bacteria um, that could make you really sick. And of course, then we've got a feeder uh, that basically loops around and feeds into the water inlet on our pop-up trailer. Uh, which will then go through uh, the built-in water filtration system uh, underneath the galley sink. Now, uh, as you can see here, the hose that I fabricated is all made from brass fittings as well as uh, potable, you know, food safe um, RV hose. And I've also left enough length here such that if I ever need to do localized chlorination of my water, uh, that I could disconnect it from the city feed and then add chlorine into my holding tank here and uh, be able to fill it using the same uh, filtration system. So I hope you found this video useful and informative. Happy and safe camping season. Rate, comment and subscribe.